1962. In our conversations, Don Juan consistently used or referred to the phrase man of knowledge, but never explained what he meant by it. I asked him about it. A man of knowledge is one who has followed truthfully the hardships of learning, he said. A man who has, without rushing or without faltering, gone as far as he can in unraveling the secrets of power and knowledge. Can anyone be a man of knowledge? No, not anyone. Then what must a man do to become a man of knowledge? He must challenge and defeat his four natural enemies. The enemies a man encounters on the path of learning to become a man of knowledge are truly formidable. Most men succumb to them. What kind of enemies are they, Don Juan? He refused to talk about the enemies. He said it would be a long time before the subject would make any sense to me. I tried to keep the topic alive and asked him if he thought I could become a man of knowledge. He said no man could possibly tell that for sure. Sunday, April 15th, 1962. As I was getting ready to leave, I decided to ask him once more about the enemies of a man of knowledge. I argued that I could not return for some time, and it would be a good idea to write down what he had to say and then think about it while I was away. He hesitated for a while, but then began to talk. When a man starts to learn, he's never clear about his objectives. His purpose is faulty. His intent is vague. He hopes for rewards that will never materialize for he knows nothing of the hardships of learning. He slowly begins to learn, bit by bit at first, then in big chunks, and his thoughts soon clash. What he learns is never what he pictured or imagined, and so he begins to be afraid. Learning is never what one expects. Every step of learning is a new task, and the fear the man is experiencing begins to mount mercilessly, unyieldingly. His purpose becomes a battlefield, and thus he has stumbled upon the first of his natural enemies, fear, a terrible enemy, treacherous and difficult to overcome. It remains concealed at every turn of the way, prowling, waiting, and if the man, terrified in its presence, runs away, his enemy will have put an end to his quest. What will happen to the man if he runs away in fear? Nothing happens to him except that he will never learn. He will never become a man of knowledge. He will perhaps be a bully or a harmless, scared man. At any rate, he will be a defeated man. His first enemy will have put an end to his cravings. And what can he do to overcome fear? The answer is very simple. He must not run away. He must defy his fear, and in spite of it, he must take the next step in learning, and the next, and the next, he must be fully afraid, and yet he must not stop. That is the rule. And the moment will come when his first enemy retreats. But won't the man be afraid again if something new happens to him? No. Once a man has vanquished fear, he's free from it for the rest of his life. Because instead of fear, he's acquired clarity. A clarity of mind which erases fear. By then, a man knows his desires. He knows how to satisfy those desires. He can anticipate the new steps of learning, and a sharp clarity surrounds everything. The man feels that nothing is concealed. And thus he has encountered his second enemy, clarity. That clarity of mind which is so hard to obtain dispels fear, but also blinds. It forces the man never to doubt himself. It is like something incomplete, if the man yields to this make-believe power, he succumbed to his second enemy and will fumble with learning. He will be clear as long as he lives, but he will no longer learn or yearn for anything. But what does he have to do to avoid being defeated? He must do what he did with fear. He must defy his clarity and use it only to see. And the moment will come when he will understand that his clarity was only a point before his eyes, he will know at this point that the power he's been pursuing for so long is finally his. He can do with it whatever he pleases. His ally is at his command. His wish is the rule. He sees all that is around him, but he has also come across his third enemy, power. A man at this stage hardly notices his third enemy closing in on him. 
and suddenly, without knowing, he will certainly have lost the battle. His enemy will have turned him into a cruel, capricious man. Will he lose his power? No, he will never lose his clarity or his power. Well, what then will distinguish him from a man of knowledge? A man who is defeated by power dies without really knowing how to handle it. Power is only a burden upon his fate. Such a man has no command over himself and cannot tell when or how to use his power. Well, how can he defeat his third enemy, Don Juan? He has to defy it, deliberately. He has to come to realize the power he has seemingly conquered is in reality never his. He must keep himself in line at all times, handling carefully and faithfully all that he has learned. Thus he will have defeated his third enemy. The man will be by then at the end of his journey of learning, and almost without warning he will come upon the last of his enemies, old age. This enemy is the cruelest of all, the one he won't be able to defeat completely, but only fight away. But if the man sloughs off his tiredness and lives his fate through, he can then be called a man of knowledge, if only for the brief moment when he succeeds in fighting off his last invincible enemy. That moment of clarity, power, and knowledge is enough.